The Olympic Aquatic Stadium was bright and full. The crowds cheering. But under the water, all Teresa Go could hear was her heart thrumming. She focused on pulling her arms through the water cleanly as she repeated in her head, no matter what, no regrets, give your best. She had trained for this moment her entire life. But would that be enough? I'm Veritan, and this is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, a fairy tale podcast about the rebel women who inspire us. On this episode, Teresa Go, Paralympic athlete and outspoken advocate for social justice and LGBTQIA rights. Growing up in Singapore, Teresa Go loved the water. Maybe because there were pools on practically every corner where she lived. Or maybe because, in the water, she felt fierce and free. On land, things were much more difficult for Teresa. She was born with spina bifida, which means her backbone was not fully formed. And the doctor said she would probably never walk on her own. She had many surgeries as a little girl. Each time, her parents tried to cheer her up drawing fantastic pictures on her casts, or getting her new crutches. But the best gift was when they first took her to a swimming pool. It was heaven. Teresa felt so buoyant and strong. She could float, glide, and propel herself across the pool for hours and hours. One day, when Teresa was 12 years old, Someone from the Singapore Disability Sports Council saw her swimming and told Teresa's father she had a lot of potential. He said Teresa should think about joining a swim team. Teresa wasn't really the competitive sort, but she loved everything about the water, so she signed up. Soon after Teresa joined a swim team, she started competing in regional and national competitions and winning medals. Each day, she pushed herself to go further and faster. She was determined to get to the biggest competition for disabled people, the Paralympics. In 2004, Teresa became the first female swimmer from Singapore to be part of the Paralympic Games. She competed in five different events and made it to the final rounds. Though she didn't take home any medals, she felt like a champion. She promised herself that at the next Paralympic Games, she would win. For the next four years, Teresa trained nonstop. She barely spent any time with her friends and family. She postponed going to college so she could focus solely on her swimming career. Teresa flew to Beijing, China for the 2008 Paralympics and got to hold the Singapore flag in the opening ceremonies. But as her races got closer, she felt her confidence eroding. She tried to channel her breath and repeat empowering phrases to herself. No matter what, no regrets. Give your best. The crowd was cheering so loudly as she pushed through the final leg of her 100-meter breaststroke race. She was doing it. She finished the last stretch, reached for the wall, popped out of the water, and saw that she was fourth. The bronze medalist had beaten her by 0.7 seconds. Teresa was devastated. She'd come so close. She'd given up so much of her life for this moment. And now she felt like she'd let everyone down. From her coaches, to her parents, to the people of Singapore. Teresa just wanted to be done with swimming. She went home and tore down the notes of encouragement and inspiration she had hanging by her bed. For nine months, she refused to go near a pool. She tried to pick up other sports or busy herself with activities. Still, somewhere deep inside her, Teresa heard a voice growing louder. I'm 
not done yet. She needed to go back to the water. She knew the story of her life as a swimmer was incomplete. So she put on her swimsuit and headed back to the pool. The water lifted her up and made her feel invincible again. And that's when she realized the answer. She had to rediscover her love of swimming. Not to win, not to prove anything, just to have fun. Teresa went back to training. This time, she made sure her schedule was lighter, building in time to rest and enjoy her family and friends. She started competing again, but with a new mindset. She wanted to rediscover swimming and celebrate all that her body could do. She didn't need to be the best. She just needed to appreciate where and who she was. In 2016, Teresa made it back to the Paralympic Games, this time in Rio, Brazil. On the day of her big race, the 100-meter breaststroke, she was getting ready in the changing rooms. Nearby was another Paralympian who had swam faster than Teresa back in Beijing. Teresa's rival leaned in and said, This is your time. Teresa was surprised and flattered and ready to prove her right. Moments later, Teresa was at the side of the pool, waiting for the signal to start. In the stands were her parents, friends, coaches, and trainers, cheering her on. Take your mom. Teresa launched herself off the wall. She couldn't think about her opponents. She couldn't think about her time. She just had to become one with the water, carving out her path with every stroke. Her muscles burned as she zoomed forward, her breath fast but steady. Finally, she stretched out her fingers and touched the wall. She pulled off her goggles and looked up at the scoreboard, her eyes filling with tears. She did it! After 17 years of competitive swimming, Teresa won a bronze medal at the Paralympic Games. Since her win in Rio in 2016, Teresa has continued to push through many uncharted waters. In 2017, she publicly came out as queer in Singapore's major newspapers. She was Singapore's first nationally known athlete to ever do so. She's also become a major advocate for disabled people and for the LGBTQIA community. She's committed to making this world a more inclusive and supportive place. And even though she retired from competing in 2019, Teresa still has inspiring quotes and phrases that she loves to repeat for motivation. She encourages everyone to embrace these words too. They are, be kind, be brave, and be yourself. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was narrated by me, Farrah Tan. It was produced and directed by Deborah Goldstein with sound design and mixing by Real Audiobooks. It was written by Alexis Stratton and edited by Abby Scher. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Our executive producers are Jess Wolf and Joy Smith. Original theme music was composed and performed by Elettra Barjaki. A special thanks to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Until next time, stay Rebel! Rebel!